Hi y'all, welcome back to our fifth grade science series. Today we get to talk about gravity and stars in Earth and space sciences. We'll look at the stars in the night sky, including the sun, and we'll talk about the force of gravity. So let's get started, science rocks. All right, get out that science notebook and look at this, only nine vocab words. So that's exciting. Remember, they go in ABC order like this. Just go ahead and copy them down now and come back later and create your own definitions of these words. So there are many stars in the universe, one of which is the sun. So the sun is actually a star. There are about 8,000 stars that can be seen from the earth with your eye. So these stars form constellations like this, or groups of stars. There are officially 88 constellations that can be seen from earth in the night sky. So this photo shows the constellation known as the Big dipper okay so here's the handle and here's like the pot okay so it's the big dipper which is one of the 88 constellations stars have very different sizes uh, temperatures and colors the Sun is only an average sized star so there are many stars in the universe that are much larger than the sun and there are also many that are much smaller than the sun and stars can take on a range of different colors even including blue orange red and yellow all right so let's talk more about the sun so the sun is the star that is closest to the planet earth that's why it looks so big to us the sun is the star that is closest to the planet Earth. It is only one of the many stars in the universe. So within the Milky Way galaxy, there are billions of stars. And the Milky Way galaxy is only one of billions of galaxies in the universe. So all of the other visible stars appear much dimmer than the sun because they are much farther away than the sun is. So while it takes less than 10 minutes for sunlight to reach the earth, light from the nearest stars beyond the solar system takes many years to reach the earth. So for stars that are even farther away, it can take billions of years for their light to reach the earth. So much light from the sun reaches the earth that during the day, then the entire sky is lit with its light. Okay, so this is why other stars, which are much farther away, cannot be seen during daytime because we have all that light from the sun. So like all stars, um, powerful nuclear reactions take place inside the sun. And these reactions cause the sun to release huge amounts of energy. So light is one form that this energy takes. All right, let's look at the apparent movement of stars. So to people on Earth, the patterns of stars appear to move from east to west across the sky during the night. So this apparent motion is actually caused by the rotation of the Earth from west to east on its axis. So the stars are not actually moving across the sky each night. The stars do not really rise and set. So instead, it would be better to say that the Earth has rotated so that different constellations can be seen. So at different times of the year, different patterns of stars can be seen in the night sky. So this happens because the Earth not only rotates on its axis, but it also orbits around the sun. So this is why all of the stars in the sky appear a little bit further to the west than they did at the same time the night before. So when the Earth is on the other side of the sun, then different stars will be visible visible at night. So along the earth's um, along with the earth's seasons which change throughout the year, there are seasons of the stars 
visible from Earth. So each day a few stars are visible in the east that could not be seen the night before. And likewise, a few stars that were visible in the west the night before are no longer visible that night. So the gradual cycling of the patterns of stars throughout the year is due to the motion of the Earth around the sun. All right, let's talk about gravity. So gravity is a force that acts on an object without having to touch it. So gravity pulls downward on everything that is on or near the Earth's surface. So gravity is able to act on things even if the things aren't touching the Earth's surface. Gravity pulls everything that falls, such as fruit from a tree or a diver jumping from a diving board toward the center of the Earth. So when an object is lifted up, the force of gravity must be overcome. So a person hanging from the monkey bars works against gravity to hold himself up. And very heavy things are harder to lift or move because the force of gravity is stronger for objects with more mass. Like always, please take time to watch these videos explaining more about this topic and take notes as you follow along. Practice questions. Number one, Megan throws a paper airplane. How will gravity make the airplane move? All right, so the Earth's gravity pulls everything on Earth down toward the center of the Earth. So it is able to act on all objects on Earth, even if the objects aren't touching the Earth's surface. So this means that gravity will pull the airplane down toward the ground after Megan throws it. So we're going to go with A. Number two, which of the following words best describes the sun? Which of the following words best describes the sun? Is it a planet, a star, a moon, or a comet? All right, the sun is one of many stars. The sun appears much brighter than other stars because it is much closer to the earth than the other stars. So we're going to go with B. All right, this is a cluster example where we're going to study all this information, look at this table, look at these pictures, and then we'll answer questions three, four, and five, and those questions will be over all of this stuff, okay? So let's look at the information. A student in Oklahoma studying the night sky wondered why different stars are seen at different times of the year. So the student decided to study two constellations. Remember, a constellation is a group of stars. So one of the constellations was Orion, which is right here. If you've heard of Orion's belt, it's those three stars that form like a straight line. That would be like its belt, Orion. And the other constellation is Boötes right here. So the student found two pieces of information about the constellations. So first, the student found the number of hours Orion is visible each night. The student recorded the data for different months in a table. Okay, and next the student found a picture to show where Earth is on its path around the sun in December. So the student copied the picture and also marked where the constellations Orion and Boötes are in December. So the student, um, the student's picture is shown right here and the student's table is shown right here. So the table, remember, is just about Orion, where, um, how many hours can it be seen at night in Oklahoma? And he did months February through December. And here's the number of hours it could be seen in the sky. And then here's the picture representation right here. So number three, during the year, the number of hours Orion can be seen in Oklahoma changes. Okay, and I put this table on here to help you remember. So which graph... Okay, we've got A, B, C, or D. Which graph correctly shows the changes? Okay, so notice how the graphs are set up. These are bar graphs. Down along the bottom on the x-axis, we have the month. 
Okay, it goes February to December. And on the Y axis, this horizontal axis, we have hours Orion can be seen. Okay, and you'll notice some differences here. Um, how this graph is set up, A, eh? when you set up a graph, you want to start at zero and go by even increments increasing. Okay, this graph is set up with random um, numbers. It uses the information from the table, but it puts it just like it was pretty much in the table. It doesn't use it in um, a zero to increasing number fashion. So I'm going to go ahead and mark off A. Okay, if you look at B and just how it's set up, hours Orion can be seen 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That looks good. It's increasing at even numbers, even increments. If you look at um, graph C, hours Orion can be seen, it's going by 1, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 12. And same thing with D. Okay, so either um, way these are set up, could be fine. So now we need to look at the actual bar graph itself and match it up to the information in the table. So when we look at February, it says Orion could be seen for 7.2 hours. Okay, so let's start with graph B and we're looking at February and it doesn't even have a bar graph for February. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mark B off. So now we're down to C and D. We're looking at February in graph C, and it goes up a little bit above seven hours, so that would be good. Um, February in graph D actually goes up to eight, so that's not good, but let's let's check a couple more um, just to make sure. Um, let's look at April. In April, it says it could be seen for 3.4 hours, so it wants to be somewhere between that three and four hour mark. So graph C, April is between three and four. Graph D, April is actually all the way up to four. Okay, so we could go through the table and match up all of them, um, but I do know that all of them match up correctly to C. Number four, some months are missing from the student's data table. Okay, so here's the student's data table, okay, when Orion can be seen. We've got February, and then what about March? April, what about May? June, what about July? August, what about September? October, what about November? December, and then what about January? Okay, so that's what it means by some months are missing. So, um, and here is the correct graph that we picked out as well. Okay, so you can see some... Months are missing. So which table over here, which table, A, B, C, or D, shows the number of hours Orion will likely be seen in September and in November in Oklahoma? Okay, so let's look at August. Okay, then we will need to see at what it would be in September. Okay, August, September. It's going to be somewhere between there. Okay, and then October, then we need to look at November, so it's going to be somewhere between there. Okay, so let's find the correct table. All right, so September needs to be somewhere between 1.3 and 6.4. Okay, September needs to be somewhere between because it looks like it's increasing. 1.3 and 6.4. September is actually lower here than 1.3. So we can cross off A. Um, September here in table B is 3.8, and that is in between 1.3 and 6.4. Okay, so let's go on to C. September here is only... 0.8, okay, so we needed September to be um, in between 1.3 and 6.4, so point A is way small, so we're going to cross off C, and then let's look at choice D for the table. September is 7.25, all right, and that's too high already because September is in between August and October, and we need it to be in between 1.3 and 6.4. So let's cross off D, but let's double check that B works for November as well. We need November to be in between 6.4 and 11.2. 
and it is 9.8, which is in between 6 and 11. All right, so B would be our choice. Last one, number five. Which graph over here, A, B, C, or D, shows the number of hours Boötes will most likely be seen in Oklahoma night sky during the year? Okay, we've done all this information about when Orion can be seen, and we picked out its graph, okay? So look at this picture here at the sun, okay? And here's the Earth, and here's where Orion is located, and here's Boötes over here. Okay, so we have to think about which graph would match up. Okay, so if you look at one of the um, least amount of hours where Orion can be seen, it would be in June, right? So Boötes is going to be not that low in June. Okay, so looking at some of these graphs here, we can go ahead and mark off B because it's showing June is still very low there. And then let's take a look at December. That stands out to me. December is um, a high amount of hours seen by Orion. Okay, but look at the location of Boötes. All right, it's a little bit different, right? So December, um, Orion can be seen for a lot of hours in the sky. So for Boötes, December is not going to be the um, highest or the most um, hours in the sky. So we can mark off C because look how high um, December is for Boötes, and that would be the same as Orion. Okay, so now we're down to A and D, and by looking at the location of both of these constellations and the data provided for us for Orion, we can um, tell that graph A would be the best choice if you go through all of the months. Okay, so after you have fully mastered all of this, you should be able to create a project or a presentation or an experiment or maybe a model. You should be able to support an argument that the gravitational force exerted by the Earth is directed down and support an argument that differences in the apparent brightness of the sun compared to other stars is due to their relative distances from the Earth.